The flying may have stopped, but the feeding can't. We're joining Paul on his morning rounds. In a few days' time, the lockdown will lift and he'll be shooting pheasants again. So is this part of your routine? Yeah, every morning at the moment. Uh, normally get up here just before light, have a cup of, cup of tea or something, and uh, yeah, and then load up, do the feed round, a bit of dogging in on the backside, and then uh, on for the day. Well, this month's been different because we basically had stalkers every day, so we've been doing a lot of this at night, which actually worked quite well because we've been trying to get the birds on this, on this beat a lot wilder, not doing so much whistling, not so, so much like spinning and feeding with a bike, but it's worked. They're really, uh, yeah, they're sharp, really sharp actually, really pleased with them. But yeah, it's quite a nice, uh, nice start to the day when it's like this, when it's raining, it's not so good. Normally at this point in the season, he would be feeding fewer birds, but thanks to COVID, there are still plenty around. It's an extra cost, he has to, needs to bear. Oh, and here, we've only had two days on this shoot, so two small days as well. So, yeah, we're still on full full ration, basically. The other shoot, we've, yeah, probably down sort of like a third. And also all the wild foods um, pretty much used up now, so all the acorns and the hedgerow foods used up, so they're, they're pulling back in onto the feed rides and onto the feed areas anyways. And also we've still got a lot of ducks over here. We haven't shot any ducks at all. Ducks seriously trough the food. It is not just a case of tipping out the feed and letting the birds get on with it. They are driven by food as well as lured by food. Overfeed them and they'll start heading for the hills. Yeah, it's basically chuck a load of food into the water and the ducks can eat it and the pheasants generally can. <laughs> it takes about an hour and a half for Paul to feed this beet. It's a well-trodden route, but as he mentions, his new feeding regime has made the pheasants wilder, more flighty. He refills the hopper away from the cover crops so he doesn't scare them. Come on, Mr Squirrel, where are you? As well as feeding, Paul's also equipped for pest control. <laughs> He has his cute 410 side-by-side -side and a very new Zeiss DTI, the first thermal offering from the German optics company. No go. Bit of action. This is an old folding action poacher's gun. Yes. And then the old poachers get out. Nobody around. Bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> Good fun. To help us with our squirrel detection, Paul has the new Zeiss Thermal on test. It costs about £2,600. He won't be taking it stalking, but he's finding lots of uses for it, including squirrel spotting. Sneaky, aren't they? I foxed again. I foxed again by Mr. Squirrel. painful creature. Very clever though. <laughs> what would be perfect for this would be sit it up somewhere, got an area where all the squirrels come in and feed, whether it's hoppers or, or some chestnuts or beech mass or whatever it is, and just sit there with your air rifle or on the rifle on the floor when they come into a hopper and just sit there and pick them off with a silencer, you know, take a, take a few sandwiches, hot drink. I haven't got time for that. Well, there he is running across. <laughs> <laughs> 
This squirrel makes a dash for it. Tucked in there, really. He's rammed himself in there. He's dropped down, that's the problem. There we go. Cool. Don't squeeze. Proud of them, David. Proud of them. <laughs> that's because they keep banging them against the trees when they jump across the trees, isn't it? I've seen the youngsters, look. Look at that tiny little youngster, late youngster. And you've got the old. Master Buck. So yeah, done a bit. Five squirrels, all good. Gamekeeping is not one job, it's lots of jobs. And on a day like today, they are all pretty satisfying. For more information about the Zeiss DTI Thermal, go to zeiss.com.